the Ask Me How I Know show. I'm your host, Julie Holly, and I'm so excited you're here. Ask Me How I Know is the only podcast in the multifamily niche replicating what takes place outside the walls of a seminar. Remember when we used to get together like that? This is like the lobby where honest, unscripted conversations take place and transformation happens. We'll talk about practical problem solving in the multifamily niche as well as overcoming mental roadblocks. This episode is brought to you by Three Keys Investments. Three Keys Investments is dedicated to helping people like you, yeah, you, enter the multifamily investment space to build passive income and legacy wealth. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed Ask Me How I Know, I'd be honored if you did. Thanks so much for joining me today, and now for our featured guest. Hey guys, welcome back to Ask Me How I Know. It is another Marvelous Mindset Monday, but I'm going to give you maybe a little forewarning here. If your feelers are a little flared today, I'm letting you know right now that I'm not going to hold anything back. We're going to talk about limiting beliefs and self-sabotaging, and it might sting a little bit. So I just listen to this, go into it forewarned. I think it's going to be powerful. In fact, If you're thinking, I don't want to listen to this, this might sting too much, that might be, if you listen to the end of it, you know, to the end, you might realize like that's your cue. That's the decision that you need to make. But I hope that you listen to the end and I hope that you're leaving me some feedback. But, oh boy, we're going to talk about limiting beliefs. You guys ready for it? (laughs) Here's the deal. Limiting beliefs prevented me from chasing my dreams with an all-out pursuit for most of my life. Mm, Maybe you can relate. I was so busy comparing myself to others. I didn't accept myself for who I am or how I'm created to be. Maybe you can relate in your own way because you're probably not like me and I'm not like you. (laughs) I've learned to be this person. Even when it's awkward, even if it's uncomfortable, I know that being me is the best person to be. And the same is for you. Here's something else I found. I found that it it was safe to encourage others and to help others pursue their dreams. But what about my dreams? What about encouraging myself? I had to realize that I was worth encouraging. And so are you. Here's a little bit more. Through some traumatic life events five years ago, I realized I was so busy encouraging and helping others. I wasn't helping myself. Here's the secret. I thought I was selfish if I did that. If that's you, let me tell you right now. You are not a saint when you are a self-martyr. Yeah, that hurt. Excuses for not striving for your full potential, they're costly to you and those around you. Here's the deal. Self-martyrs, they put shame and guilt and blame on others, and it feels so emotionally satisfying in the moment, and it leaves a path of destruction. It's actually a passive-aggressive way of playing a victim, and it costs everyone. I took a shift in life. And earlier this year, I launched a portion of my dream, this podcast. Listen, I'm a nobody. Okay, let me clarify. I'm not saying I'm worthless. I'm not saying I'm less. I'm simply growing into the leader I know I can be to help many, many more people become the people they want to be, that they're afraid to be, like I was. Sometimes we're afraid to grow into the person of our dreams. So I took this chance. I committed for an extended period of time. I launched the podcast. And guess what? It changed my life. I'm not going to lie. It's been tough as nails. And I have struggled so much with imposter syndrome. I have doubted myself. I have criticized myself. But I did some other things too. You know what I did? I slapped jealousy in the face. Yeah, jealousy. Because sometimes we look at other people's lives and we're jealous. And instead of pursuing our life, we're jealous and we're wasting our time. I got rid of that. 
And I stuck with the dates and deadlines my boss set. Mm, that's me. I'm the boss. And when I doubted, I cheered myself on. Oh, goodness. I've also learned technical things oh, that I've never even wanted to learn because they were the bridge to get to where I wanted. I showed up when I didn't feel like it. When I wanted to quit, I still showed up. This really hurt, but I sucked up pride. It held me back from success for too many years. Guys, humble pie is the best thing to eat. And then I shared what I learned with other people. Maybe they'll reach success sooner than I can, or I will. I don't know. Depends on what their success is, right? What, what, how we define that. I silenced the naysayers. I was like the primary naysayer. And I did something really hard. I received encouragement from others. And here's the deal. When you're willing to show up every day, you're going to grow. It's this weird effect, right? You're going to get better at things. That's just simply how it works. Show up, get better, and receive that encouragement. It makes all the difference in the world. You can overcome too, and you can chase down the path you're supposed to be on. And you're saying, Julie, how do I even know the right path? Guys, it's not rocket science, okay? It's not magic. The right path is usually tough going, but even though you're running the gauntlet, there's this underlying steady inside of you telling you that you are on the right path. If you've ever had somebody blindfold you and lead you around, you might be able to relate. And if you haven't, have someone do that for you, right? But they guide you and they gently correct your missteps and put you on the right path. Here's the deal. Sometimes you need to take a curve in life or, you know, you need to take a detour. And sometimes you simply need to take a full on hard exit and get off a path that happens. But living the life of your dreams means flexing and shifting as life shifts. In all reality, the life of your dreams is just a series of small decisions. They often feel really daring. And those decisions are stacked on top of each other. And the more you do this, the more comfortable it will become. And then it just snowballs. This week, dare, dare to make those decisions. You'll know them when you want to resist. So when resistance comes your way, that's your cue to actually think about the choice you are about to make. Like stop, think. And then, you know what? As you start having these wins, you got to come back and let me know how it goes. Drop a message over on LinkedIn or Facebook. I'm easy to find, and I'd love to hear about it. Until next week, go find your freedom. Thanks so much for joining me for another episode of Ask Me How I Know. This episode was brought to you by Three Keys Investments. They are dedicated to helping people like you. Yeah, you, my awesome listeners, develop passive income and legacy wealth through multifamily investing. Feel free to check out their website, threekeysinvestments.com, to see if there is an offering that will help your portfolio grow and meet all of your needs. If you haven't already rated, reviewed, subscribed, liked all of those bells and whistles, I would be absolutely honored if you do that for Ask Me How I Know. Thanks again, and go make it a great day.